Hi everyone, I am Kim Nardo R. Lumanas, a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Environmental Management and is a GIS enthusiast. The topic is all about the storm surge impact scenario in the municipality of Gargara Leyte. This is an assessment on the impact of storm surge on the population of the town. The Philippines is described as an archipelagic state and is basically surrounded by hundreds of kilometers of shorelines wherein communities thrive fast, thus boosting coastal development. Out of 1,541 municipalities, 832 or 34% of it are coastal communities which comprises 62% of the population. This signifies that this number is largely vulnerable to impacts of climate-induced hazards, specifically to storm surge. A tropical cyclone have an immense effect in the country, especially with respect to agriculture, industry, livelihood, and public safety. In 2013, a storm surge in Tacloban City Leyte, induced by the Super Typhoon Yolanda, claimed more than 6,000 300 lives and 2.86 billion US dollars worth of damage. Thus, the need for assessing the impacts of future disaster events is crucial for better planning, preparation, and response activities for coastal communities. An analysis was made to estimate the possible impact of a storm surge on the population of Cargara Leyte. The analysis was portrayed through a map indicating the number of people likely to be affected, located in classified hazard zones, and the barangays that were identified and considered as critical areas needed for attention. This presentation shows on how open source software and open access data can be useful in determining the likely impacts of climate-induced hazard to number of population which will provide insights for better disaster management. The output is a storm surge impact scenario map which determines the number of population likely to be affected in the event of a storm surge in the municipality of Garigara Leyte. The impact was assessed using a free plug-in software. The analysis details estimated that 23,300 people are likely to be affected. These are people who were exposed within the extent of the hazard. The 19,300 people are not exposed while 22,700 are likely to be displaced. The displaced population are people who have to leave their place of residence because of risk or a disaster. Meanwhile, the estimated number of people affected, which is located in high or surge height above the head zone, had a total population of 11,600. The 11,200 people will be inundated by storm surge with chest deep surge height, which is located in the medium zone, and the low or knee deep surge height zone have a total population of 560. The results also identified 20 barangays out of 49 that were considered as critical or where the most displaced population might occur. Sawang Poblacion showed the most displaced population with a total of 4,000 people, while Uyawan has the least displaced population with a total of 10 people. Basically, these 20 identified barangays show where the most critical needs are. The analysis was run through an open source plugin in QGIS, the InnaSafe plugin. This plugin was developed by the Indonesian government, the Australian government, and the World Bank. It provides a simple but rigorous way in combining data from scientists, local governments, and communities to provide insights 
into the likely impacts of future disaster events. This is a general overview of the INASAFE methodology. First, it is a scenario assessment tool and it does not produce any hazard models or exposure data. A suitable data must be obtained before running an impact assessment for a particular hazard or location. For this analysis, the impact was assessed from a storm surge. It needs a scientific hazard data from technical agencies. In this case, the Storm Surge Advisory 3 data set obtained from dost -ST and is an open data. Furthermore, an exposure data was also used and is available freely from worldpop.org. It is a free and open population data set for almost all countries with high-resolution data of 100 meter cell size. Secondly, InaSafe combines the exposure and hazard data to estimate the number of people affected. Then, InaSafe generates a report and can aggregate the results by administrative boundary. InaSafe can also calculate the minimum needs required to support the affected population and is also modifiable according to the local requirements. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to incorporate the data on the map. Finally, InaSafe produces a map to show the people in the affected area. But on this case, I created my own template to better show the impact of the storm surge on the population by incorporating the analysis results on the map. In conclusion, InaSafe is free and open source software that can be used for disaster impact assessment. As an open source software, it will always be developed to fulfill the needs in disaster preparedness activities. By preparing for disasters in the right way, the government and the public are likely to be better prepared for a future disaster event. Even though the analysis was limited only to secondary data and relied solely from open source dataset for the population and natural hazard or storm surge dataset, still, it will provide good baseline information for disaster risk planners and local government units for them to enhance by incorporating their primary data based on actual and community surveys. That's all. Thank you.